Hello everyone, welcome to the Mike Armstrong podcast show and uh, this afternoon I'm joined by Bob Berg who's a, um, an award winner or a record author, a speaker from America and uh, Bob likes to speak to people about uh, uh, business and, and, and all the different lessons that he's had in life. He's also a best-selling author of uh, Go Givers and also uh, The Endless Referrals. So uh, great to have you on my podcast today, Bob. Hey, thank you, Mike. Greetings from across the pond. Hope you're doing well. Yes, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, I actually come across yourself. I hadn't heard of you before, Bob, um, but I'm new to the personal development space. And I come across you through an Intrabiz event recently, who I'm a member of. I've been a, a member for a while. And I thought uh, after you, uh, you was on and I got to find out a little bit more about you, I thought you've got some fantastic things to share to my audience. And um, I'd love to get you on. So thanks for coming on. My absolute pleasure and honor. Yes, brilliant. Thank you. So, um, yeah, what, what, what I thought uh, resonated with me is obviously you come from a sales background. So, so do I. I used to be a corporate sales director and I'm a massive fan of, of, of giving. I believe uh, givers get. So I, I loved, uh, you know, reading about your book and, and hearing about all the things that you've done. For the people who don't know you, just like I hadn't um, when I, we first uh, sort of come across you, can you tell people a little bit about your background and, and what you've done in the, in the past, et cetera? Sure. Well, I started out in broadcasting, first on radio and then in television, very small, small markets. Um, and I, you know, I wasn't particularly good at those. And I, I like to say I graduated into sales. The, uh, the challenge I had, Mike, was that I, I knew nothing about sales on a formal level. I didn't know God, anything about it, really. So, and the, the training where I was first working was negligible at best. It was really non-existent. So I was kind of on my own to, yeah. to go out there. So I, you know, I mean, I, I hustled, I worked hard, I knocked on doors and I made calls and I presented, but I, I didn't know what I was doing. I thought sales was just talking about your product, blah, 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 and try, you know, and so forth. Um, there was a, I, I don't know if you remember the speaker, Jim Rohn. He was a wonderful yes. business. Well, yeah, he was great. He used to say, he would have said, at that time, I had the motivation, but I didn't have the information. <laughs> so yeah. sometimes when you have the, when you're motivated, but you don't know what you're doing, it doesn't really do you a whole lot of good. Just like if you have the information, but not the motivation, it still doesn't do you any good. You've got to have both. Right. And uh, so I floundered for the first few months until I was in a bookstore. Now, this is almost 40 years ago, and sales training and sales teaching wasn't as prevalent as it is now. You didn't know that it was even out there. And I was in the bookstore, and I saw a couple of books. One was by Zig Ziglar, a, a legend, and another was by another legend, Tom Hawkins. And I bought those books and just studied them. And I mean, for, for uh, like three weeks, when I'd get back home from work, I would stay up into the the wee hours of the next morning, just reading, uh, rehearsing, underlining, highlighting, taking notes, uh, dog-earing the pages. You know, I mean, I just, just ate them up, right? Yeah. And within a few weeks, my sales were going really well. And, and that inspired me because what it told me was, if you have a methodology for doing something, a system, if you will, you can pretty much, within reason, accomplish about anything that you set out to do. Yeah. Uh, I personally define a, a system as the process of predictably achieving a goal based on a logical and specific set of how-to principles. The key being predictability, right? If it's yeah. been yeah. proven that by doing A, you'll get the desired result of B, then you know that all you need to do is A and continue to do A and continue to do A. And eventually you'll get the desired results of, of B. And so at that point, once I knew that, I started just making a study of sales, going to conferences and getting back then it was tapes, not even CDs. It was, that's how long ago. I remember was. the tapes. <laughs> yeah. And started really getting into personal development. And that was a real key because you started to see that it wasn't just what you knew about sales and selling. It was about how you built yourself up and fed yourself first on the inside. Yeah. Right. So I would get all the books that I'm sure you have that, you know, how to win friends and influence people and the magic of thinking big and the science of getting rich and thinking about rich and, and, you know, um, 
is that like four down and uh, ten X? Right. <laughs> yeah. And so, so you know, I just started really being a student of sales. Yeah. I've never stopped being a student of sales. Uh, and eventually I worked my way up to sales manager of another company. And from there just started teaching others how to do what was working for me. And that was really the, you know, the story. Yeah, that's great. Because um, I, I, I did something very similar myself, but I didn't actually turn to books. I just studied people and studied the, the, the best sales people around me and my bosses and, and psychology. I've always been fascinated by people. And, you know, ultimately, if you understand people, then you can, and well, you can, you can sell or, or you can provide solutions to, to their needs. You know, that's such a, a great, uh, that is such a great, great point. I, I true, and that's why I'm, I'm constantly studying human nature. I believe, uh, you know, just my opinion, that if you understand human nature, at least to the degree any of us can truly understand human nature, um, well, you're really putting yourself in a really good position to succeed. Because who are we dealing with? Humans. It's never about the products. No. It's not, I mean, the products are important, but it's never about those. No. It's about the person you're serving, right? Yeah, when I was doing door-to-door -door sales, what I learned, I was only 16 at the time, and I, I, I was a team leader at 18, and then, you know, I was earning quite good money, you know, at, at that time. And what I learned, or what I phrased it as at that time, is, is, is about buttons. Everyone's got a button, and all you've got to do is find the button, the, the thing that turns them on to what you're doing. And that button's different for different people. Yeah, exactly. You know, Harry Brown, who was really one of my, <coughs> excuse me, great mentors, I consider him a, a mentor, he used to say, salespeople all the time ask, how can I motivate my prospects to buy? And what he would say is, you don't have to motivate them to buy. They're already motivated to buy. Your job is to discover what it is that motivates them, yeah, which is so yeah. similar to what you said. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, find, find the thing within your product that they're looking for, you know. I, something which I teach people now is I'm on a mission to become a global speaker at some point, which is why I love having Excellent. listening to master classes and listening to speakers and learning from them. And it's why I listen to a lot of audio books and, and all of that. And, um, and yeah, and um, to me, it was about, um, you know, it's about finding that button to press, which, which, you know, everyone's got a pain, everyone's got a problem. And if you can find how your product solves that problem, what within your product solves that that pain and or gives them pleasure or whatever it is that they're looking for and, and, and the only way you can find that out is by asking good questions really exactly well that's the only way it's discovering you know when you think about it selling can really be accurately defined as simply discovering what the other person wants needs or desires and helping them to get it that's, that's right, selling. Yeah. the interesting thing is that the old English root of the word sell was salan, which meant to give. So when you're selling, you're literally giving. Now, someone can say, well, wait a second, isn't that just semantics when you're selling, you're giving? What are you really giving when you're selling? Well, let's say you're in front of a person and you're, you're about to, to, to be engaged in a sales presentation. What are you giving? Well, you're selling, certainly. What are you giving? You're giving time, attention, counsel, education, empathy, yeah. and of course, immense value. So when you're selling, that's exactly what you're doing. You're giving. Yeah, one well, of my advice is, one of my advice is for salespeople is to, to become a good salesperson, stop selling, and start providing solutions. So start questioning and start giving, start giving people what they want rather than what you want to give them or what, what you want to sell them, you know? So uh, yeah, um, I'm obviously interested in, in how you pivoted from being a sales manager and, and obviously doing training on your own team, if you like, which obviously is what I did when I was a sales manager. How did you pivot from that into becoming an author, a speaker, and all of that? Because that's the sort of the, the path I'm on right now is, is that path. So I'm interested in finding out how you did that. Well, I actually uh, started selling cassette tapes for a speaker whose seminar I went to and attended and I bought his tapes and I was listening to them. You know, I'm that 10% that of the people who actually listens to the whole program and goes through it and does it, right? You know? Yeah, so, detailed person. We know, so, well, we know a lot of people, they buy, they, they invest all this money and stuff and then they never actually do it, you know? <laughs> and so it's like, 
what good does that do you? You know, by all means, invest in things that are going to help you to grow. But then when you when you get it, go ahead and do it. Yeah, use so, them. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so at the back of his tapes, um, again, these were tapes. That's how long ago this was. There was a a, a flyer back there, or the back page said, "If you'd like to earn some extra money by learning how to sell these tapes, call our office." Uh, so I did, and I, I went down there and met with them, and they taught me how to speak for free at all these 20 to 25, 30-minute, uh, you know, group meetings, whether they were, you know, little company sales meetings or or Rotary, Kiwanis, all the, the civic groups and organizations, and how to do it, and then at the end, how to sell his tapes, and we would split it 50-50, you know, that, that sort of thing. And um, I start. I was doing that for about a year and a half. I don't know how many presentations I did. It was in the hundreds, right? Uh, and then I just started to think, you know, I can actually make a living doing this, but you know, being paid to do it as opposed to doing it for free and just selling other people's tapes. So I started to learn how to to um, to go into business for myself as a speaker. Uh, now I had joined National Speakers Association, which is an organization here in the states. Uh, we have a, for certainly a lot of uh, a lot of colleagues uh, from the UK uh, in it, although you all have your own as well. But um, uh, but that really taught me the business of speaking, and uh, that was a you know that was a wonderful investment for me to join because I met some great people who were very happy to answer questions and to share their wisdom with me, and and that's what the organization is all about. So that's really how I uh, you know made the shift into into speaking for myself yeah okay that's good and um and obviously there's a lot of sales people out there who who unlike yourself and and, and what, what resonated with me is because i'm like it too you know when listening to, to yourself there's a lot of sales people out there who are who are if you like they're they're, they're money hungry and they're in it for themselves etc and they're not so much in it for, for other people but i think you know what, what what resonated with me about yourself is is, is you share the same passion that I do about helping people and, and giving to others in order to, to, to get back in return down the line, if you like, or, you know, in the power of the universe or, or a, of other people giving back to you or however that happens. Well, um, you know, I, I think it's really, it's, it's actually pretty logical when you think about it, because when you can shift your focus, and I think this is, is really the thing, Mike, and, and I know you do this, when you can shift your focus from getting to giving and when we say giving in this context we simply mean constantly and consistently providing immense value to others understanding that doing so is not only a a more pleasant way of conducting business it's actually the most financially profitable way as well and not for any magical reasons or mystical reasons it makes sense when you're that person who is again focused as you said focused on solving their problems focused on helping them, focused on bringing immense value to them, focused on helping make their life, their business better, okay? People feel good about you. People want to get to know you. They like you. They trust you. They want to be in relationship with you. They want to do business with you personally. They want to talk about you to others. So yes. really, I, I think when you have a heart for serving and you have a heart for you know helping others the way they want to be helped, it, it just by the very nature of the thing comes back to you in in big ways yeah so so it makes logical sense so why why is it so many salespeople don't do it well there's a couple reasons I, I believe one is it's the way most people have been taught you know when you think about sales most people who are not necessarily in sales or maybe some even who are if you said well define sales they'd probably say well it's about trying to convince someone to buy something they don't want or need yeah. Well, that's not sales. That's being a con artist. But yeah. that's what most people think sales is. And if you watch, you know, movies, TV shows, if you read about the stories, how do they always portray salespeople as doing that very thing? Yes. Yeah, so, 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 so people think that's what sales is about until until they learn from someone who, you know. Now, the other reason I think people are are often like that is just again, we talked about human nature. And as human beings, um, we are self-focused, right? 
And so, I mean, that's just human nature. That's survival. That's the old cave person days when every day was a matter of literally survival, just trying to make it through the day, right? Yeah. So uh, I think that's been sort of hardwired into our DNA. So that, that self-interest is, you know, you say, well, I've got to make a lot of money, so I'm going to just try to focus on getting their money. Well, what we know, right, and what your yeah. students all know who, who learn from you is if you focus on yourself and you focus on the money, that other person can tell. And, and you're less likely to actually uh, do well in sales. So what we would say is don't try and deny yourself interest that you, know, that, that you don't have to. That's, no, just acknowledge it but then place it aside, yeah. place it with temporarily suspend it for right now and just absolutely focus on bringing immense value to others. And as you talked about earlier, you do that through asking questions and then listening so that you know what it is that they need, want, and desire. And only when you know that, and you know, you know that, and you've asked questions to, to clarify and qualify and so forth, only at that point are you in the position to match the benefits of your product or service with their needs, wants, and desires, okay? And so that's, that's very important. So, so for the people who just say, oh, well, this, you know, go-giver stuff sounds fine, but, you know, after I've already got the money, but I need the money right now, I've got to focus on the sale. Well, the best way to not have the sale happen is to focus on the sale. Yeah. The best way to have it happen is focus on the other person. Because remember, Mike, and you know this, they're not, no one's going to buy from you because you have a quota to meet. No, no, they don't right? they're not going to buy from you because it sounds right, right. <laughs> yeah. And so that's, that's what we've got to remember. And so that's why, again, to the degree that we can focus on and communicate value to another human being, that's the degree that we are going to be very successful in sales. Yeah. So I see that as being an important thing for a lot of, if you like, people who need to improve their sales ability, need to learn. But obviously you've done a lot of training to a lot of sales people and sales teams over the years. What do you find is the thing that people, you know, need to learn most when you're sort of tackling, you know, their issues as, as people who aren't so good at sales and trying to make them better over time? I think the biggest thing is understanding that, that you are not your customer, okay? What you might find to be of immense value is not necessarily what they would find to be of immense value. When you think about what is value, okay, that's different from price. Price is just a money figure, okay? Yeah. Value is the relative worth or desirability of a thing, of something to the end user or beholder. In other words, what is it about this thing, this product, service, concept, what have you, that brings so much worth or value to another person that they would willingly exchange their money for it and feel great about it while you make a very healthy profit. So we need to understand that value is always in the eyes of the beholder. It's not what we think is valuable about about our product or service or what we think they should think is, it's what they think. And so the biggest thing I have to chat with salespeople about is to understand that we all see the world through our own filter, through our own what I call belief system. A belief is simply a subjective truth. It's not necessarily the truth, it's your truth or it's my truth. And so if, if we sell based on what we think is valuable about the product. Well, then we're taking a big chance that the other person sees the world very similar to how we see it. And those aren't good odds. No. So we know we have to put aside and say, we are not our customer. That what is it that they find to be of value? And when we focus there, now we're nine steps ahead of the game in a, a 10 step game. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. So um, what things do you have um, for sale, if you like, at the moment or for, 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 you know, able to offer to other people at the moment where, where you can deliver your immense value to them? Well, aside from our books, which people can find by going to Berg, B-U-R-G dot com, 
and they can scroll down and they can read the first chapter of any of the books to see if they like them first. Um, we have a new course that, that has just been released called Endless Referrals, The Go-Giver Way. This is a nine and a half hour uh, video, online video course. But to start out, to give people sort of a taste of what they can expect, uh, we've put together a uh, close to two hour mini course called Selling the Go-Giver Away, uh, which is, so it's, it's free. And the reason we did that is so they could see exactly, you know, what they would be getting by, you know, doing this. And so if anyone is interested in that, what I would suggest, because that's not out yet, it won't be for another week, is to go to Berg.com, B-U-R-G.com, and just subscribe to our e-mailing e list. Yeah. And as soon as that free mini course is ready, we'll let people know. And is that, is that a database you've been building for a long time on that email list? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so what, what sort of numbers are you talking there now in the data, database size? Oh, it, I mean, it's not, a huge, it's not a huge list itself. It's a very high quality list. We've got twelve okay. to 13,000 people on the list. Yeah. Okay. Well, still, it's, a, it's decent numbers. So, yeah. you know, you know I think there's you... many who have a lot more, but we kind of just sort of compare ourselves to ourselves, and yeah. it's a very uh, responsive and just wonderful list. We we call it, uh, you know, constantly and make sure that it's a list of people who really want to do business with us. Yeah, and I've not read the referral uh, uh, book. But um, is that is is the um, the premise of that? Is that you know like using like a referral scheme or something or is it just doing good business so people re refer you oh it's a system of, of a system, creating relationships with people yeah. the, the basic premise mike for that is that all things being equal people will do business with and refer business to those people they know like and trust yeah so in the book and in the the new series the video course we actually teach how to meet a person who you've never met before and actually work through the relationship building process with that person to the point that they feel so good about you. They know you, they like you, they trust you, they buy from you. If they're in, even in your marketplace, they may or may not be, but regardless, they refer you to those who, who would be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. So uh, I'll definitely get that one on the, uh, on the audio at some point yeah. when I'm uh, out on my bike riding, I like to listen to the audio. So um, I'm conscious that you've got um, other things that you've got to do, uh, Bob. So uh, I won't take any much, uh, much more of your time. But I would like to say, uh, you know, it has been short and sweet, but it's been fantastic to, uh, to get you on my podcast. So oh, um, it's been a pleasure, Mike. Yeah, thanks for sharing information. And uh, if ever I can return the favor at any point, if ever there's anything you're doing that you could benefit from, from me in any way. I know I'm not as experienced as yourself, but I've got some quite good knowledge. Right. In I think you're very, very experienced. I know you've had a very successful sales career and now you're taking your wisdom and passing it along to others and working with people who you're going to help to do the same thing. Yeah, well, I'm hoping to make a difference at some point. So I'm working hard on it. So uh, hopefully one day I can uh, have a best-selling book like yourself, Bob. I, I know you will. Okay, well, yes, uh, hopefully I will too. I think I, I think I will as well. I'll keep working on it till I do. This, this is my commitment, Bob. But uh, been a pleasure, and uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Pleasure's mine. Thank you, Mike. You too. Brilliant. All the best. Bye bye. And that was Bob Berg from uh, the well, best-selling author of the books uh, The Go Giver, and also Endless Referrals. Um, so yeah, check out those books and check out uh, Berg.com for other Bob Berg related uh, content. Uh, there's nothing else left for me to say now other than have a great day. I know I will. And thank you very much for listening. And just one more last thing. Remember, you can do it. Cheers. Bye bye.